What's going down, everybody? Steve here, Command Center Wargaming. Fantastic, welcome back. So today we're going to have a look at a custodes list. Uh, we've had a few subscribers uh, asking for custodes stuff on the channel. Um, a lot. Of, one, one guy actually said that uh, you know he subscribed because uh, there wasn't much really competitive stuff about custodes um, you know, around on YouTube. So he subscribed to us. So I thought it'd be fantastic to jump in here and have a look at some lists. Uh, revolving around custodes. Now, the lists, this will be one of my beginner lists once again. We've got a few other beginner list videos in the uh, in the catalog back there. Um, but I dare say you would even be able to use it competitively as well, if need be. Now, the thing is with these, these, this list, oftentimes what I do is I have them at 1,000 points or 1,500 points. And, um, but with custodes, it's really hard to do. So we might do another list with custodes, vanilla, or maybe sort of uh, integrated with Imperial Guard, Loyal 32 or something like that, um, and then sort of get it down that way. Uh, but for now, I think what we'll do is we'll basically just go through and uh, I'll deliver you guys and girls and people a 2000 point list, which is pretty much in my opinion, what you need to be playing custodes at. Problem is with custodes is, is that they're very, very good, but they're also very, very, very points thirsty, points heavy. Um, and, you know, in a game, 8th edition, where shots matter, you know, where it's volume of shots and boots on the ground, even a custode, you know, ballistic skill, weapon skill 2, and 3 wounds, you know, shots are going to get through, right? So it's really about the numbers. It's really about the um, things like that. So, yeah, so look, what we're going to do, uh, this is a list I'm going to read it out to you. I'm going to tell you a little bit about why, um, why this is a good list, in my opinion. Um, and the reason is mainly because it, it's a little bit of a variation on the usual just jet bike spam, right? That's one of the problems with custodes. The problems with custodes is, that I find it is that um, you... The only way up until sort of recently was to make the custodes competitive with a whole bunch of jet bike spam. Now, the issue is with that, there's two issues. Number one, you're very, very predictable, right, with the way that you play. And number two, it's kind of boring in a way uh, because you've basically just, you know, you're just using the same unit over and over again. It doesn't really, uh, you know, add much variety to just have you know, 12 jet bikes on the, on, on the battlefield, right? So, um, so yeah, so recently with the Forge World rules released and things like that, uh, well, not really recently, but now with the Forge World rules released, uh, Custodes are sort of heading up there in the meta a little bit more again, which is fantastic. And um, this list is actually from a competitive tournament. And, um, and I've had a look at it and I really think it's really awesome. So we start off, Number one, this list is 2,000 points flush. Now, at 2,000 points, I think that's that's epic because I hate lists even if they're like one point or two points lower, all right, than their actual um, total amount of point cost. Because to me, I mean, sometimes it's, look, it's completely, it's completely unavoidable, right? But, um, but to me, it's still one or two points that you're wasting, you know, like when you're making a competitive list. Every point counts, and it kind of sucks because, like, with um, you know, with space marines and stuff or whatever, you can just you know, if you have two points to spare, you can just add in like a you know, a storm bolter for two points, or even a heavy stubborn now, like, is two points, and you can just you know, shoehorn that in. Um, but with custodes, it's a little bit more tricky, but anyway. Okay, here's a list so it's 2,000 points, it consists of a spearhead detachment for one command point. Right, and then it consists of a, a fast attack detachment as well, okay. And uh, also, you've got a I think actually that's it, yeah. So, there's a spearhead detachment and a fast at attack detachment and an outrider detachment, which is fast attack. So, you've basically got, yeah, three, three there. So, you've got um, two CP, two CP, that's four CP. And then another one CP for the uh, spearhead. So you've got five CP in total, plus your normal three CP, which is battle forged, right? So at six, seven, eight, it's eight, eight command points. Um, and the list also features Trajan Valoris, uh, which you have the option to attempt to get uh, command points back, 
which is absolutely fantastic, right? So there's there's something there. You may even be able to get that up to like, you know, like 11 command points if you if you roll well. Um, so yeah, the HQ is Trajan Valoris, right? He comes in at 185 points, okay? And then you've got elites. This is part of the spearhead, all right? And the first elite is a Vex, Vexilla Praetor, right? He's got a Storm Shield and a Vexilla Magnificer. Right now, he's the guy who's going to make your stuff minus one to hit, right? And this sort of works in synergy. I used to run something like this with Telemon Dreadnoughts, and I still rate Telemon Dreadnoughts. Um, but the thing is, is just point for point, the grav tanks, which are coming up later, are a tiny little bit more efficient. Now, just keep in mind, everybody, that right now, all the Forge World rules for Custodes are, in fact, beta. So they may be subject to change, right? So before you run out there and buy like three grav tanks and stuff like that, or three telemons or whatever it is, just have a think about it. You might want to sort of use the same method, but, you know, using different, maybe cheaper options, right? Custode's biggest problem before has always been um, their ranged firepower, right? Aside from the land radar, this is pre-Forge World 40k rules, uh, aside from the land radar and uh, a few other things, like they really didn't have much flavor when it came down to range weaponry. But now, like with all their grav tanks with the Telemon, you know, things like that, um, you know, even even the um, even those range custode guys, uh, Sing Singwinner Guard or something, uh, I can't remember what they're called now. They're not that great, but they're, they're basically still a ranged option right you've got like jet bikes you've got the new jet bikes and and you've got the uh all, all that kind of stuff now which is which is fantastic so all right so yeah so we've got that and part of that part of that spearhead uh is also a heavy support now this is where you have three calendars grav tanks right now again these rules are in beta okay and at the moment they're 210 points they have a Twill Elastrus Accelerator Cannon and a Twin Lastrum Bolt Cannon. Now, these things will absolutely rip the crap out of stuff from long range. And the amazing part about these Grav Tanks is that they're Grav, right? So they're already moving like 14, right? And when someone comes in, if someone wants to come deep strike you, because you'll be sitting up the back with them with your Vexilla Magnificer up the back as well, giving them that minus one to hit bubble while the rest of your force is up the front, right? And the amazing part about it is if someone sort of like manages to deep strike down near you, whatever, they have to add two to their charge rolls, which means that, you know, they can only deep strike nine away, all right? And unless it's maybe like Gene Stealer Colts or something like that, you might have to watch out again. But then you've got to add two onto the charge roll. So they're actually charging on 11, not a nine, which is really hard to do on two dice because it means you've pretty much got to roll a six and a five or you're not going to get in, right? So it makes them really hard to charge. And even if they do get in, they're grabbed so they can like leave combat and shoot. Right, and they can also just like fly away, like you know, like 14, 14 inches away. Like, bye, see us. So that's what makes these things really, really powerful. Say over like the Telemon sitting there back firing up, you know, with the twin Elastris, um, and that kind of stuff, and and base Arachnus. Uh, I think it was called the the Arachnus um, laser destroyer or something like that. But firing with its long weight range weapons. So um, so basically, yeah, that's the way I would run it. And um, then you've got the next attachment, which is now all that comes to 1,065 points. So you've got your HQ, you've got your, two, you've got your HQ there, you've got your, your Elite, all right? Now, if you want, if you didn't care about that Vexilla, I think it's important because giving that minus one a hit means that Guardsmen, you know, Imperial Guard, Tau, all that kind of stuff are ready for hitting on fours, it means they're hitting you on fives. Right, so in my opinion, it's well worth it. But if you didn't want to have that guy in there, you could probably take it out, you know, add a shield captain or if you wanted someone further in, or you could basically maybe tweak the list a little bit and, um, and chuck in a shield captain on a bike. That would do it as well. That's absolutely amazing. But I, I would run with this. I think this is, this is really awesome. And um, then we have the next detachment, right? which is a shield captain on a Dawn Eagle jet bike, right? 
He's 160 points. Hurricane Bolter and the Warlord trade. I would give him superior creation. Um, so he gets his three plus uh, involved, but you can give him whatever you want. It's not really going to matter too much. But uh, I would be going with superior creation for that. If you were, well, he is the Warlord, right? So that kind of makes sense as well. So, and then you're going to have under fast attack, right? You're going to have a palace grab attack uh, uh, carrier, right? With twin Arachnus blaze cannons, right? Which is a small little transport, right? And then you're going to have Virtus Praetors as well. So coming in at 360 points, right? You're going to have the Versus Praetors coming with Hurricane Bolters basically peppered on throughout, all right? And you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of those, right? And, um, and yeah, so, and that's, and that's going to bring you up to 2,000 points, all right? So that's, that's what's going to be awesome. That's going to be pretty epic, um, to do that. So you basically go through and you've got your Virtus Praetors on bikes basically just jamming up. They go up the board, right? Um, you have your you have your shield captain on a on a Dawn Eagle basically, you know, on his bike. And uh, and you put you could put Trajan in the golden beams, they basically teleport down, or you could also go through and you could have him in the transport if you wanted to as well. Well, you know, so, uh, or you might be able to drop down the Vertius Praetors as well. Uh, but either way, they're, they're going up the board. Now, each squad of uh, five of those is 360 points each. All right. So they basically just go up the, port, the board and they and they slam stuff. And in my, in my opinion, this is a very, very, very balanced list. It's 2,000 points right on the dot. You've got... You know, your army going up into the front lines, do we want custodes do best? Which is basically slamming the crap out of things in melee, right? And, um, you know, and plus you got your HQs in there. You got two of the best HQs in there, which is the uh, cat shoot captain on the Dawn Eagle jet bike and Trajan. Trajan's come down like amazingly to 185. He's come down by like 100 points since the last chapter proved. So before he was a bit... Uh, yeah, I don't know. All right, but now he's he's great. Okay, so yeah, and then you've got your backline. You've got your firebase. Now, anybody who's seen like some of my lists before and all that kind of stuff, or lists that I endorse. So I'm just saying, I haven't invented this list. I have very similar lists that I have done. Um, but this is a list that's pretty much close to my exact list, except I had Telemon Dreadnoughts. This list is using the grav tanks, right? You could easily just swash, swap them out. Um, but um, but yeah, this is definitely a list that I would take in and, and I would take uh, and endorse as well. What you could do, if you wanted to throw it up a little bit, you could remove like two or three of those um, Virtuous Prey Tours on the, the Dawn Eagle jet bikes. And, uh, and you could basically go through and put in a Loyal 32 instead and sort of like you know marry that off a little bit yeah you'd have to mess around with the command points and stuff like that but to be honest like the backbone of this army are those grav tanks so those those caldus grav tanks sitting up the back they're the things that are just going to be sitting there all game and while while your forces are up the front like you know you bring your you bring your your, your troop transport you fly it up and you you deliver everything else and um and basically you're smashing stuff out there and then you've got your virtuous praetors, you know, going in as well next to it, you know, charging things and stuff. Uh, the idea is you want to keep those things as busy as you can, right, while your ranged attack is uh, is going on in the background. Now, just be very careful, everybody, because um, once again, it's custodes, so you are basically limiting yourself um, with numbers, all right? So every loss that you suffer is going to be brutal on you, right? It's going to be a massive loss. When you're playing other armies, you're basically going to go through and it's like, ah, oh, I lost a squad of guys, eh? I lost a 10-man squad of guardsmen. Oh, whatever. You know, there's like, there's like 40 points. Ooh, you know? Um, but yeah, so... But in this case, it's like every loss here that you suffer is a massive hit. So yeah. All right, everybody. So look, I hope you've enjoyed the... Uh, I hope you enjoyed the list. 
And, uh, you know, if you like what you've heard here, uh, subscribe to the channel. And uh, I'll catch you in the next video. See you later.